Hello everybody! Welcome to the Rodla Public Library Storytime and I'm Miss Tara. This week's theme is magic cooking pots. And maybe you remember but our magic story time bag turned into a magic cooking pot. We'll see what kind of story we have in just a minute. But first, let's do our hello song that we do in American Sign Language. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Great! And we sing that song at story time to remind us that we're all friends. We're here to use our ears for listening and your eyes for watching the story. Speaking of our story, hmm, magic story time cooking pot. What is our story today? What are the clues? Hmm. What is this? Do you know what this is? Part of a pool noodle. You can't cook pool noodles. That's a cooking pot. What are you talking about? What? What? Oh, this story's about noodles, not just pool noodles. Real noodles that you eat, like masticioli, you've got cheesy macaroni. Yup, there's a trusty spoon. Oh, hey, look at this. This is another type of cooking pot that you can set on top of a cooking fire, or yeah, cooking fire. Kids can cook, campfire chef. We have all kinds of cookbooks here at the library. Did you know that? You can come curbside and pick them up. Okay, so obviously our story is about noodles and cooking. What is our story? Aha! Strega Nona by Tommy DePaula. And we have quite a few of his books here. We have Strega Nona's Magic Lessons. And we have Strega Nona Meets Her Match. And quite a few other books by this author that you can ask for. And we'll bring them out to you. Hmm. Ah. So this is an old tale retold and illustrated by Tommy DePaula. So he's an artist too. There we have Steganona holding the magic cooking pot. Let's find out what happens. You got your eyes for watching, your ears for listening. Hmm, this is an Italian villa. That's another word for a village, villa. They're staying on us. She looks happy. In a town in Calabria, a long time ago, there lived an old lady everyone called Strega Nona, which meant Grandma Witch. Although all the people in town talked about her in whispers, they all went to see her if they had troubles. Even the priest and the sisters of the convent went because Strega Nona did have a magic touch. She could cure a headache with oil and water and a hairpin. She made special potions for the girls who wanted husbands. And she was very good at getting rid of warts. But Strega Nona was getting old and she needed someone to help her keep her little house and garden. So she put up a sign in the town square. There she is putting the sign up.
and Big Anthony, who didn't pay attention, went to see her. Anthony, said Streganona, you must sweep the house and wash the dishes. You must weed the garden and pick the vegetables. You must feed the goat and milk her. And you must fetch the water. For this, I will give you three coins and a place to sleep and food to eat. Oh, Grazi, said Big Anthony, and that means thank you. The one thing you must never do, said Stregonona, is touch the pasta pot. It is very valuable and I don't let anyone touch it. Oh, see, yes, said Big Anthony. And so the days went by. Big Anthony did his work and Stregonona met with the people who came to see her for headaches and husbands and warts. Big Anthony had a nice bed to sleep in next to the goat shed, and he had food to eat. One evening, when Big Anthony was milking the goat, he heard Streganona singing. Peeking in the window, he saw Streganona standing over the pasta pot. She sang, Bubble, bubble, pasta pot. Pull me up some pasta, nice and hot. I'm hungry and it's time to sip. Pull in the pasta to fill me up. And the pasta pot bubbled and boiled and was suddenly filled with steaming hot pasta. Mm. Then Stranganona sang, Enough, enough pasta pot. I have my pasta nice and hot. So simmer down my pot of clay. Until I'm hungry another day. How wonderful, said Big Anthony. That's a magic pot for sure. And Stregan and called Big Anthony in for supper. But too bad for Big Anthony, because he didn't see Stregan and I blow three kisses to the magic pasta pot. Can you so can you blow three kisses to the pasta pot? One, two, three. And this is what happened. The next day, when Big Anthony went to the town square to fetch the water, he told everyone about the pasta pot. And naturally, everyone laughed at him because it sounded so silly. A pot that cooked all by itself. You'd better go confess to the priest, Big Anthony, they said. Such a lie! And Big Anthony was angry, and that wasn't a very good thing to be. I'll show them, he said to himself. Someday I will get the pasta pot and make it cook, and then they'll be sorry. That day came sooner than even Big Anthony would have thought. Because two days later, Stregonona said to Big Anthony, Anthony, I must go over the mountain to the next town to see my friend, Strega Amelia. Sweep the house and weed the garden. Feed the goat and milk her. And for your lunch, there are some bread and cheese in the cupboard. And remember, don't touch the pasta pot. Oh, yes, yes, Stregonona, said Big Anthony. But instead, he was thinking, my chance has come. As soon as Stregonona was out of sight, Big Anthony went inside, pulled the pasta pot off the shelf, and put it on the floor. Now let's see if I can remember the words, said Big Anthony. And Big Anthony sang, Bubble, bubble, pasta pot, pull me some pasta, nice and hot. I'm hungry and it's time to sup. Boil enough pasta to fill me up. And sure enough, the pot bubbled and boiled and began to fill up with pasta. Aha, said Big Anthony. And he ran to the town square, jumped on the fountain and shouted, Everyone, everyone get forks and plates and platters and bowls. Pasta for all at Stregonona's house. Big Anthony had made the magic pasta pot work. Of course, everyone laughed, but ran home to get forks and plates and platters and bowls. 
And sure enough, when they got to Strigonona's, the pasta pot was so full, it was beginning to overflow. Up, oh, there's all the people in line for the pasta. And there's the magic pasta pot. And Big Anthony. Big Anthony was a hero. He spooned out pasta and filled the plates and potters and bowls. There was more than enough for all the townspeople, including the priest and the sisters from the convent. And some people came back for two and three helpings, but the pot was never empty. When all had had their fill, Big Anthony sang, Enough, enough, my pasta pot. I have my pasta nice and hot. So stir down my pot of clay until I'm hungry another day. Well, he did not blow the three kisses. He went outside and to the applause of the crowd, Big Anthony took a bow. He was so busy listening to compliments from everyone that he didn't notice the pasta pot was still bubbling and boiling until a sister from the convent said, Oh, Big Anthony, look! And pasta was pouring out of the pot all over the floor of Jake and Nona's house and was coming out the door. Big Anthony rushed in and shouted the magic words again, but the pot kept bubbling. He took the pot off the floor, but pasta kept on pouring from it. Wow, look at all that pasta! Big Anthony grabbed the cover and put it on the pot and sat on it. But the pasta raised the cover, and Big Anthony as well, and spilled on the floor of Strega Nona's house. Oh, she's not going to be too happy about that big mess. Stop! yelled Big Anthony. But the pasta did not stop, and if someone hadn't grabbed Big Ant, poor Big Anthony, the pasta would have covered him up, and that pasta had all but filled the little house. Out of the window and through the doors came the pasta, and the pot kept right on bubbling. The townspeople began to worry. Do something, Big Anthony, they shouted. Big Anthony sang the magic song again, but without the three kisses, it did no good. By this time, the pasta was on its way down the road, and all the people were running to keep ahead of it. Ooh, pasta avalanche. We must protect our town from the pasta, shouted the mayor. Get mattresses, tables, doors, anything to make a barricade. But even that didn't work. The pot kept bubbling and the pasta kept coming. Whoa, here comes the pasta. Whoa, pasta avalanche. We are lost said the people, and the priests and the sisters of the convent began praying. The pasta will cover our town, they cried. And it certainly would have had Strega Nona not come down the road. There she is. Home from her visit, she didn't have to look twice to know what had happened. She sang the magic song and blew the three kisses. Okay, let's blow the three kisses to stop the magic pasta pot. All right. With a sputter, the pot stopped boiling and the pasta came to a halt. Oh, Grassy, thank you, thank you, Steganona, the people cried. But then they turned on poor Big Anthony. String him up! The men of the town shouted. Now wait, said Strega and Nona. The punishment must fit the crime. And she took a fork from the lady standing nearby and held it up to Big Anthony. All right, Anthony, you wanted pasta from my magic pasta pot, Strega and Nona said. And I want to sleep in my little bed tonight. Start eating. And he did. Poor Big Anthony. Oh, look, his stomach's all big, and he looks like he doesn't feel too well, does he? That is a lot of pasta. Oh. 
He ate all that avalanche of pasta. But Stregonana got to go sleep in her bed that night. The end. Well, thank you for coming to Storytime. If you haven't already, make sure to come by with an adult to the library and ask us to bring you the craft. This week, you get to make jewelry, bracelets, or necklace out of colored pasta. You can have your own pasta avalanche that you can wear around the house. Well, thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Bye!